near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. This is Mr. Chris Claremont. A legend. Melanie goes, eat some How's it going, all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of collected editions. And join me today for your advanced look at the Captain Marvel Genis Bell by Peter David Omnibus. It is finally here. So, join me. And welcome back, everybody. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on October 10th or 11th, depending on where you get your books. What we're looking at here is the direct market cover by Alex Ross. On the left-hand side is your standard edition cover drawn by series artist Chris Cross. But everything underneath the dust jacket is identical. So let's bring it back to this. We have this image of Captain Marvel, Janice Vell, in his new costume. Uh, that doesn't happen until the second series. And I'll explain what's collected in here and, and what differs by Peter David. But I do love this image by Alex Ross. It's kind of a take on the original Marvel's outfit. And Captain Marvel, Janice Vell by Peter David. There he is down there at the bottom. And then the Marvel omnibus logo right up there and then the covers of all the issues collected in here Janice Vale and Rick Jones the ultimate buddy team and that's exactly how I would pitch this book now if you are a fanatic of Omnis and you have to have them all or Captain Marvel is your favorite character no matter what incarnation let me show you what it would look like on your shelf. Here are all the Captain Marvel Omnis so you have the original Marvel we still need a volume two so Save a slot for that. We haven't announced that yet, but hopefully sometime soon. Then we have Captain Marvel, the Miss Marvel era, which isn't really Carol Danvers' Captain Marvel, but she does become Captain Marvel later on. And then we have this late 90s, early odds Captain Marvel, Janice Vell. And I'll talk about what's also missing from here in case you want to go deeper into the character. Here we have Captain Marvel by Kelly Sue DeConnick. And then Captain Marvel by Kelly Thompson, Volume 1. I've announced the Volume 2, and I believe that one comes out next November, if I'm not mistaken, of 2024. But this is what it, all five of them so far would look like on your shelf if you get all of the character incarnations of Captain Marvel. But let's take a look underneath the dust jacket. So we have the flaps right here, showcasing Genis Fell. The way he primarily looks throughout this entire omnibus. Owa Tagusiam. <laughs> you know, I never got that stupid joke until I saw the odd couple. Anyway, uh, a little bit of the bio on the creators, Peter David, and yes, Chris Cross. And I swear if anybody makes a jump joke, you better jump your ass off them comment section. Anyway, let's take a look at what's underneath the dust jacket here. So we have this image of Janice Vell in his different forms. And, of course, the symbol of Captain Marvel there, right in the middle of the spine. It's got this neon look to it. All right, we're going to crack this book open. We're going to talk about the stories collected in here. I am going to go ahead and give you a fair warning, though. This is my favorite Captain Marvel run, so I may go into some spoiler territory. But in order for me to set up the character of who he is and what he's doing playing the role of Captain Marvel, I do have to talk about some of the appearances that happened before this particular omnibus. Now, if you don't want to know anything and you want to know what to read before this, the biggest thing to read is the Avengers Forever story, the uh, Destiny War, which is collected in Avengers Omnibus by Kurt Busiek and George Perez, Volume 1, if you want to read that. That leads into this series, honestly. Uh, but there is no legacy collection yet, that's available collecting the character when he was known as Legacy when he first appeared on the pages of Silver Surfer Annual 6. So that would be about the only thing I would say to collect uh, or to read before this. And you know what? You can put me on mute. I hate to spoil this for anybody, but I do have to talk about the setup and then some of the stories collected in here. You can just look at this beautiful artwork. All right, let's crack it open. 
Okay, let's go ahead and get this thicker than a snicker, boy. And it's thick. This is a big book. And here's your green end sheets. Mine did come with a little bump on the corner, but that's okay. Worry not. Yours should be 100% okay wherever you order it from. Captain Marvel by Jen is Fell. So you have two of the big outfits that he wears throughout this omnibus. Uh, he does have a third one, just right here, which is really not that different than this first one that he starts off with. Janice Vell, written by Peter David, or by Peter David. There is one particular issue that I love, love the fact that Fabian Nicias I got to write. I'm so glad it's included in here. Uh, because I always worry about creator-centric books when they leave something out because the creator didn't work on it. But I'm glad that they decided to keep it here. So what does this collect? Let's talk about that. This collects Captain Marvel Zero, which was the wizard issue that came with Wizard Magazine. Um, and 1 through 35 of the 1999 series. And then Captain Marvel 1 through 25 of the follow-up series in 2002. This book has 1,400 pages. So what we're looking at here is artwork by Chris Cross. And oh my gosh, his art is stellar. And it's really interesting and almost ironic that this is the type of book that he gets to draw because he also worked on Firestorm. And if you're familiar with that character, and when I talk about the premise of this, you might make the connection. All right, so what's going on through these pages? Well, we are meeting the character of Rick Jones or reuniting with him if you will all of this like i said taking place after the big destiny war which was taking place in avengers forever by kurt Busiek and the legendary carlos pacheco and what happened at the end of that particular storyline is that in order to save rick jones life because he had used the his uh cosmic powers again kind of like what he did in the pages of the kree scroll war is captain marvel merged with him using the Nega Bands. And if the Nega Bands touch, Mar uh, Genis Fell, almost called him Marvel. <laughs> You're going to find all kinds of humor through here. Uh, once the Nega Bands touch, Captain Marvel comes out, Genis Fell, and, you know, fights monsters or whatever it needs to be doing. And I'll talk a little bit about where they hang out, uh, because very similar to the original Marvel. Rick Jones is sharing a body with him. It's a little bit different, though. We also have the return of Marlo here, who is a big character in The Incredible Hulk. Peter David really loves this character. And I love that they included this. This is the history of Rick Jones and Captain Marvel. Now, if you haven't read the Legacy issues when he was known as Legacy and then he became Captain Marvel in the late 90s actually no the mid 90s was right when i was leaving comics uh so the character started off as a character known as legacy Janice Fell had the white ponytail looked like this he had a leather jacket and he was fighting against his legacy just like any 20 year old would i'll talk a little bit about the legacy here in a second because i did warn that we're gonna be talking a little bit about spoilers um, he appeared in the pages of Silver Surfer Annual Number 6. And on the left-hand side, you get the story of Rick Jones, who, of course, has a, been in Marvel Comics since the first appearance of the Incredible Hulk and his connection to the original Captain Marvel. This is Marvel, And eventually, yes, this does talk about the demise of Marvel and his death. And then how him and Marlo got married. And then the Incredible Hulk, when he was known as War, doing something horrible to him, crippling him making him almost completely useless. And he was, you know, a big sidekick for not just Marvel, but also Captain America and the Incredible Hulk. He's always been like, I think outside of Robin and maybe now that Bucky is back, um, outside of those two characters, he's the longest running sidekick. And then on the right hand side, you get to find out a little bit about the character of Janice Fell. And as you find out through here, you see that Janice Fell is the son of Marvel, the original Captain Marvel. Now, he was introduced, like I said, in the pages of Silver Surfer Annual Number 6. He was created by Ron Mars, and I believe it was Ron Lim, if I'm not mistaken, who drew that. But what this shows here is a little behind the scenes, and this is all explained through that annual, and then later on his own Captain Marvel series, which only lasted six issues, is that Elysius, one of the Eternals that Captain Marvel, the original Marvel, was in love with, she decides to use this Eternal advanced technology 
to impregnate herself with the genetic material that made up Marvell. So, to protect Genisfell, because there's so many people that are after the original Marvell that don't want his legacy to continue, uh, she aged him up and then wiped his memories and gave him like false memory implants, kind of like Wolverine. And he was raised, and then he kind of became a, a renegade in his 20s. And this, he got his own series. It was called Captain Marvel. That was the one that was written by uh, Fabian Ciesa. And it was as I was leaving comics. I think Ed Bennis actually drew those. And lasted six issues. And honestly, it was, uh, it was one that I wasn't buying. I was only getting X-Men at the time. And as I was leaving comics, I didn't see it come to an end anyway. Mark Grunewald was behind that, though, because he was part of the... He was the editor of the Cosmic Era of Marvel during that time before he passed away. But the only issue I ended up getting was issue number three, which featured the extreme... The, yeah, third Summer's brother, but whatever. That never happened. Uh, although we did get some X-Men Legends um, stories out of that. All right. So, we don't see Captain Marvel for a long time. We don't see Genesville, even though he's Captain Marvel. And a lot of that probably had to do with the IP. You know, they have to renew the IP so they can keep the name. And what happens is, during Kurt Busiek's for, um, Avengers Forever story, we have the character of Rick Jones. By the way, I used this little image to tease this omnibus um, before I announced it on our Patreon. I don't think anybody got it. it okay, so back to Avengers Forever... It, Rick has this power where he can summon Avengers from different timelines, and one of the characters that he summons is the character of Genisfell from the future, now known as Captain Marvel. So, like I said, in order to save his life, they uh, Captain Marvel, Genisfell, merges with Rick Jones, and now both of them share one body. But it is a little bit different than the way Marvel and Rick Jones shared a body. Uh, instead of hanging out in the negative zone... Janice Vell is hanging out in the microverse, and that gets really fun. By the way, I love Rick Jones' room. It's so awesome. He's got Rom right there and the Silver Surfer board, the Green Lantern. Um, he writes, the way that Peter David writes Rick Jones, it feels like it's a lot of himself into this particular character. And I love that about him. So whenever there's trouble, Rick Jones touches the Negabands together, and in pops Janice Vell. So it's the original concept just turned on its head. Since Rick Jones this time around is the more experienced hero of the two characters. And Janice Vell is a little naive, still young. But he does have a good sense of humor. And is a lot more down to earth than the original Marvell. And, you know, some people reading this for the first time might just see this as a juvenile, like juvenile sense of humor. Uh, there are a lot of jokes through here that are very, very... Uh, referencing the pop culture of the times uh, you have jokes in here about will smith and the wild wild west and how much that bombed uh, you have jokes on jerry springer or even like some stuff before reality television or the blair witch project stuff uh, some of the sp not spin not spin-offs but spoofs off of the blair witch project it's just really interesting to see that stuff through here but it, i think it's aged really well and the beauty of this book, if you're not familiar with the character of Janice Fell and Captain Marvel, is that through Rick Jones, you get to find out, like, or, yeah, through Rick Jones, he fills you in on everything that you've missed out on so far. Like, you'll see a story in here where he's fighting the Psycho Man, and Janice Fell's like, Psycho Man, who's that? And Rick Jones pretty much breaks down, oh, this is Psycho Man, Fantastic Four villain, this, these are his powers. So it's a really cool, unique way. It's almost like his oracle and also his conscience now when rick jones is out he also hears Janice fell like Janice fell's face pops up and he's talking to him sometimes it gets really weird especially when there's a little um sexy time between him and marlo so let's talk a little bit about the supporting cast so we do have marlo who is uh running golden orange comics i love that because they actually talk about comics through here she has this guy that's working for her named alex and he has his own secrets which doesn't even come to play until much later. Um, there's this weird character right here, Lorraine, who, this isn't a spoiler, who, who ends up dying but becomes a ghost that only Marlo can talk to. But then she gets her body back and it gets really complicated. I love the fact, there's the Jerry Springer joke, I love the fact that Peter David got to write the Hulk 
But during this time, it's the Animal Hulk, like the Strong Hulk, and not the Smart Hulk. So I thought that was really interesting that, you know, he was forever known as the writer of the Hulk. And also it's very important to know that this takes place before the modern cosmic saga. So you have Drax here, kind of like a big dumb guy. He's not the Drax from Keith Giffen's uh, story where he was reborn as a smart, muscular Drax. He's kind of a big buffoon. There's the fight with the Wendigo. And like I said, the Hulk shows up through these pages. And yes, Lorraine right here, who is a ghost that only Marlo can see and then later on gets her body and she becomes a big part of the supporting cast of this particular book. Ron Lim filling in this issue and you also have the character of Moondragon who shows up and decides to stay with Rick Jones for a while to kind of help guide him on his quest as she calls it. So I mentioned that where he goes is the microverse. So when they switch bodies they end up going to the microverse and that is so cool to see because you do see bug you see marionette you see other characters from the micronauts the ones that they can use of course right um, not the ones that were well now owned by hasbro there's the wrong statue that he has or the bus that he has in his place but it's really cool that peter david was using these obscure characters from a late 70s early 80s comic that not a lot of people remember so there's a lot of cosmic things that happen through here. God bless the way that Chris Cross draws Marlo. My goodness. Wow. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of Easter eggs through here. There's a young girl named Kelly that plays a big part uh, through the first few issues. And her, she's got a really interesting power. And speaking of power... When people talk about powerful characters in the Marvel Universe, I hardly hear anyone mention Jenis Fell. But he, if, you, um, if you've never read this, he is one of the most powerful beings. When you get finished reading this, you're going to be like, how has nobody utilized this character more? This guy is almost god-tier cosmic type of character. This is a wonderful, wonderful issue. I love this. Look, look at the way that this is written, too. Uh, together again for the first time, but I love the credits right here. So Jim Starlin comes back to draw the character of Marvell. This is together again for the first time. Jim Starlin, legendary penciler, Al Milgram, legendary inker, and Peter David, somewhat known writer. Man, Peter David was just keeping it humble back then. It's so cool to see that. So what the story is is yes, Jenis Fell gets to meet his father but is it really his father or is it an interdimensional being what what's going on uh there's a god of death that escapes the microverse here and this is when you get this insane now this is the type of artwork to expect through most of this book and this is crisscross to me at his best and this is the character of una rog right here and if you know that name rog from the original marvel you might take a guess as to who she is um She's not the only one. There's a lot of, like, legacy type of characters through this big book. Now, I do need to talk about this issue, and then we'll go back to Criss Cross. This is the one that's drawn by Patrick Searcher. And Fabian Isis and Patrick work together on Thunderbolts. Speaking of Thunderbolts, that's where you follow the adventures of Captain Marvel later on after this omnibus is over. All right, so Fabian Isis gets to come back to do one issue. This is so cool. Because remember when I said the 1995 series of Captain Marvel was canceled after six issues? He had ideas to keep that series going. One of them including a poker game with Thanos. So it got canceled. And he never got to live out those ideas. Now, this issue right here, this is so freaking cool. Truth or Dare, it's issue number 14. He writes what happened in between the time the series was canceled and the destiny war which is avengers forever so he gets to tell his story in a way about what legacy was up to again jenis fell during that particular time introducing a new villain and oh man i love that i thought that was so awesome of either peter david or marvel to do that this is the psycho man story i was talking about and no matter who you are meeting for the first time if you're not familiar with that character don't worry rick jones will fill you in 
as to their power levels and who they are, where they first appeared. Sometimes even so, like, breaking the fourth wall. And Jim Starlin gets to come back with Al Milgram to tell the story of uh, Thor, the Asgardian story right here. And I think if you have the omnibus of... What is it? The uh, Spider-Man 2099. There's a little bit of double dipping here with a Force uh, issue story. And there for a while, this is what Rick Jones looks like. He's got a missing arm. He's an old guy. And here's Lorraine celebrating that she's alive. And there is a reason why he looks like that. And doesn't he look like that forever? I'm sure if you read comics now, you know what he looks like. There's a really powerful story here. This is the Nuff Set issue. Marvel this month, every comic was no dialogue. I loved it. It was Nuff Set. I think the there were a couple people that cheated. Uh, I think one of them was Grant Morrison. But I think it was Grant Morrison, so they kind of got their way. This is where Rick Jones is just down on his luck. And it's a quiet issue. It's Christmas. And it's about how he's lost one of the Nega Bands. This kid is trying to sell it to a pawn store. And it goes into some rather dark before the light type of story. And it's a beautiful story uh, told through these pages. I I really like that one. And that's before the big event that's to happen, which is the four-part cross. It wasn't a crossover, but you do see characters like Spider-Man 2099. Uh, this is the Time Flies storyline. And you also see Maestro through here. Now, this is the stuff that's collected in the pages of Spider-Man 2099 Omnibus. Um, Star Fox coming back. And there for a while, there was some connection between Star Fox and Genis Fell. But the truth came out about his actual lineage. Now, this introduces us a new, to a new villain named Thanatos, who comes and tries to destroy Rick Jones for a particular reason. And, yeah, Rick Jones has just had it. You have a returning character from the Incredible Hulk run, and I'm not talking about Maestro. I'm talking about somebody else, a freaking psychopath, shows up through these pages. It was a character I was like, wow, Peter David bringing characters. So you do get a bit of a payoff if you've read things by Peter David, like his stuff on Hulk or his Spider-Man 2099. This is such a wonderful issue. This is the Captain Marlowe or <laughs> Just the Marlowe issue. It's a story about Marlowe having near-death experiences in her past. And it really comes full circle later on when it's there's a lot of revelations behind her character. And more of cosmic stuff in here, including that particular character known as the Magus. This is J.J. Kirby on artwork here. Looking very similar to that of Criss Cross. So let's talk about Criss Cross because that's whose art you're mostly going to see through these pages. I love his art. It's very fresh. It's very crisp and clean. Uh, has a lot of like, to me, like Ed McGinnis in there. Uh, you've got like Pasquale Ferry, Terry Dodson, and Nick Bradshaw, Arthur Adams. I don't know. There's just so many things that I, I see in his art. I love it. It's so good. And I remember when I first read these issues and single issues as I was coming back to comics, that was one of the biggest draw to this particular uh, series. Um, we get to the final issue here, issue 35, but I did want to point out that some of the variant covers, there's not a lot, are collected on the opposite side of the standard edition covers. You can find out how the original series ends, uh, but it leads directly into the next series. Now, I need to talk about this one without going too much into spoilers. Uh, by now, Criss Cross kind of takes a step back, but we have different artists like Ivan Reis taking on the duties of drawing these particular issues. And this right here is when it gets, to me, dark. There's a particular story in here um, that I'll talk about here in a second. But you have artwork in here from like Paco Medina, and you have Michael Ryan, Paul Azaketa, and you have Aaron Lepresti doing the series. And I believe Keith Giffen actually is the artist that ends up finishing out this particular series. So there are some amazing stories in here. This right here, this story, Four Characters in Search of Creation. This is one of the most amazing stories that will kind of give you an idea how powerful Genis Fell is. Here you have Entropy. And Genis Fell, Rick Jones, and Epiphany. And they're gathered together in this cosmic space to decide on some things. And that's 
what I'm talking about. That's when you see the true power of the character of Janice Fell. You have the Coven storyline here about a serial killer. But this is a payoff to really what was happening here, right? Because you have two people coming from two different worlds. You have Janice Fell and Rick Jones. And there have been questions asked by Janice Fell um, about certain <laughs> moral things, like what you should do with villains. And it comes into play here, and it gets crazy. And he gets a new costume. He dons the Kree warrior costume, and there's a whole reason for that. There's a storyline called Crazy Like a Fox. The Shi'ar Empire gets involved. And a lot of it, or actually all of it, has to do with the fact that Jenis Vell has this power called the Cosmic Awareness. And through this particular 25 issues after the main series, it changes the tone of the story. The supporting cast kind of takes a back seat. Uh, even Rick Jones takes a little bit of a back seat. But it gets dark. Because there's some things that Janice Feld does here that you're like, how in the world did it go from these two guys goofing around and telling jokes about Jerry Springer and having jokes about Will Smith and movies bombing to decisions being made by a hero here that just don't feel like a hero. Um, one of the most important things that happens, though, when he uses this power is we have a new character that shows up through here, and that is Phyla Vell. This is her first appearance. And if you read the modern cosmic saga through the Annihilation and Annihilation Conquest, you know who she is, right? Like, she's, she becomes Quasar, and then she wants to take on the Captain Marvel name, but she is Janice Vell's sister. Now, through the first 35 issues, you know, you're reading this, and he never mentions a sister. The way this is done, I promise everything is explained in due time. How she came about, and why she wasn't mentioned earlier. I think it was a very unique thing. Um, I'm just going to show you the uh, final issue here showing this Keith Giffen artwork. Yep, and that's all I will show you. It is Keith Giffen that draws it. And, of course, he came to over to Marvel to relaunch, like, the Marvel Cosmic stuff with Annihilation and then Thanos and the Drax miniseries. Not a lot of back matter, not a lot of extras. You have the script of Captain Marvel 26 because, like I mentioned, some of the variant covers are in between issues. And you have... The deluxe edition of issue number three, which included a sketchbook by Alex Ross redesigning the costume. The Thanatos costume right there. And then the Marvel or Genesfell costume. This is the variant and recap pages. And Marvel Tales number one reprinting Captain Marvel zero through three. This is the uh, Carlos Pacheco cover. And one thing you probably have noticed if you're a big Captain Marvel fan, yeah, it's the character I was talking about, Kelly, um, is his costume is very reminiscent of Captain Marvel. Like, it's the same colors. It's actually the same kind of design, except it's his own take. And it's really cool. This is a Carlos Pacheco design that he did uh, in the pages of Avengers Forever. All right, let's talk about the build of this book. I think I've gone on about this way too much. I gotta do some major editing. 1,400 pages, and here's what the eye looks like. I've shown one of the spread pages. There's not a lot of spread pages uh, towards the beginning here. Uh, there's a lot of splash pages, but you can tell how the book lays over. There's a little bit of gutter loss right there, just because of the way the book is bound. And let's talk about, let's see, some light colors here. So there is a little bit of bleed through coming from the opposite page where you see some of the frames. Not a lot, surprisingly, for a, a book that's 1,400 pages. Um, maybe, yeah, you can see that caption box right there. And then there's issue zero, <laughs> which is a little, it, it kind of tells you what it is, what the stories are about, but... Really, get past that first issue so you kind of get an idea of what this is. But it's only through the lighter colors or whites that you can see some of the bleed through. And again, it's something that I look for just to make sure I'm being as thorough as possible. Amazing colors, great artwork, a fun, not taking itself too seriously story, 
But then the second half, it turns it up into a different notch and it becomes something else dark. There's still a good and powerful story in here. Um, and it has a lot of heart. There's a lot of human in here. And there's a bunch of... If you enjoy the things from the pages of The Incredible Hulk, a lot of the things that Peter David did in there, uh, you know, was kind of a character study. Breaking down the psyche of a particular character and what makes that character tick, that does happen through these pages. Um, okay, that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Waltz Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this book. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on picking it up, if you remember these stories, what you think about them, and if you've never read it, you're going completely blind because you fell in love with Peter David's writing on the Hulk or his Spider-Man 2099. And yeah, which cover you're going to get. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.